I'm always living with the struggle. It's part of my humanity. Something within demands perfection, and yet it's always out of reach. How can I cope with expectations? Like every day's another test. What if there's really only to always do their best. Grace says, come and rest beside me. I don't have to be convinced that when you give an in to failure, you'll try again. Grace says, you not surprise me no matter what you do and when you least deserve me grace says I'll be here for you will quietly remind me of people it has known and loved how every one of them was helpless if not for grace and what it does grace has right from the Good morning and welcome to Grace Baptist Church in the Sunday School Hour. If you would, rise with me and turn in your hymn book to hymn number 390, hymn 390. We'll start Sunday School. On that happy golden shore where the faithful part no more when the storms of life are o'er, meet me there. Where the street devours away in do pure and perfect day. I am going home to stay, meet me there, meet me there, meet me there. When the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore, 
where the faithful part no more meet me there here our fondest hopes are vain dearest links i rent in twain but in heaven no throb of pain meet me there by the river sparkling bright in the city of delight where our faith is lost in sight meet me there meet me there meet me there where the tree of life is blooming meet me there when the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more meet me there where the harps of angels ring and the blessed forever sing in the palace of the king meet me there where in sweet communion bland heart with heart and friend with friend in a world that'll ne'er shall end meet me there meet me there meet me there where the tree of life is blooming meet me there where the sweet went for roar on the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more meet me there and please remain standing for prayer. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray you bless our Sunday school hour. Lord, I pray you bless all the classes throughout the building today. And Lord, as the young people are being taught, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their lives. Lord, about their relationship with thee. Lord, I pray that there's anyone that's in our midst or, Lord, watching online that does not know Christ. I pray, Lord, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lead, guide, and direct, we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Let me remind you about a couple things going on. First of all, I'd like to have you uh, pray for the Millicent family. Uh, Dick and Ruth used to sit right up here, and Ruth was in her wheelchair. Ruth passed away this past fall, uh, back in November, I believe it was. And uh, Richard passed away uh, just a couple days ago. And funeral is going to be on Wednesday, uh, visitations at 10, followed by the funeral service. That's going to be at Foose and Foose Funeral Home in Clyde, Ohio. So if you want to send any flowers or anything, uh, like I said, it's Foose Funeral Home, F-O-O-S, uh, Funeral Home in Clyde. And that's for Richard Millison. And then uh, I want to remind you, there's going to be a... Uh, VBS uh, meeting briefly tonight uh, and we'll go over our classrooms and uh, things like that and then we're going to be having our on the 31st or vacation Bible school will be the 25th through the 29th the 31st a couple things are going to be going on that evening Crown College is going to be here their ensemble and they're going to be singing and so uh, make sure you're here for that and then also we're going to be having a, a birthday party that night for Oh, Joe Henderson, all right, so cake and ice cream. So anyway, uh, you uh, make sure you're, you're out for that, all right? And, uh, and then we're going to be having a gift card shower for Brandon and Mariana Weber. They're moving up here from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee to help us in our Christian school and in our youth department. So pray for them as they're making final preparations to come up here. Uh, pray, if you would, please, for John and Leah as they are traveling. They're down somewhere between Florida and Ohio. I can't keep track of them, uh, but anyway, keep them in your prayers. Also, last week we had uh, uh, Chase Southard with us, uh, him and his wife, Ashley, and they're going to South Africa. I failed to have a business meeting last Sunday night, so uh, we're going to have a brief business meeting uh, concerning them. I'd like to see us take them on for support. But if you would, um, keep that in prayer. August 24th, we're going to be having uh, David Crago, missionary to the country of Jordan. Uh, you don't hear about very many missionaries going to the uh, Jordan and Syria and places like that. But uh, God has opened up a door for them. So pray for them, if you would, please. And we certainly would appreciate that. All right, at this time, ushers, would you come please? Let's receive our offering for our Sunday school hour. And everything that comes in during our Sunday school hour, uh, unless it's specifically designated for tithes or missions or something like that, 
goes towards paying off our building early, and so that is very helpful. Let's ask the Lord's blessing. Brother Mark, would you ask a blessing, please? Brother Joe, come. Ezra chapter 2 this week. And here's a big question. How many of us read through the book of Ezra this week? Good. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, listen, if you, if you didn't get through it all the way this week, today's a brand new day. And uh, we're starting a brand new week. Let me encourage you to go through the book of Ezra. Now, if you went through the book of Ezra, you know when you came to chapter number two, you're thinking, what in the world is this here for? And uh, praise the Lord for somebody else reading the Bible, audio Bible. You can just hit play and listen to someone else say the names uh, through that. And uh, But 70 verses and uh, a lot of names, uh, but they're there for a reason. Now, if you go to Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, you'll find the same account in the book of Nehemiah. And uh, what a wonderful chapter it is. And are you thinking, how in the world can you say that? Because it's the word of God. And uh, it's there for a reason. And when you get to the end of the chapter, you find out why it's there. Because it was important for them to know their genealogy. There were some that could not reckon their genealogy. They didn't, they couldn't, they didn't have that record. They couldn't find it. And uh, God counted them as polluted. They weren't able to do the work of the Lord in the priest's office. Very important, very important. Our missionary this morning is the Ledbetters, and uh, hopefully you're praying for them. Pray for Kim. And uh, she's had several uh, uh, doctor's appointments uh, found out that she has neuropathy, neuropathy in her in her feet, and uh, dealing with kidney stones and but some other things that are happening, and um, we need to be in prayer for them as they are ministering and uh, working. Pray for here. Uh, pray for Haiti. This prayer request. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray for Kim's health issues. Uh, his chaplain ministry that he has been very profitable. He's been busy with that. He says has the ability to teach uh, to Sarasota Jail three times with about 60 inmates present. We're thankful for that. And uh, so teaching ministry, pray for that. And Haitian pastors, that God will raise up pastors there and uh, use them in, their, uh, in the churches there. And then play, pray for the police officers' protection there. I'd like you to I encourage you to go through this today, read through this, pray through this and uh, be in prayer for them who can help me this week by contacting them letting know letting them know that we are praying for them who can do that thank you shauna appreciate that very much and let's pray continue to pray for greg and becca and as they are getting ready to uh to uh, go to new zealand that god would continue to bless them and watch over them let's pray father thank you for your goodness to us today Lord, we pray for the lead better so you continue to open up doors of opportunity as they minister for you. Pray for these pastors in Haiti. Lord, that you would work in, in, in them and work through them. Lord, I pray uh, for uh, Kim this morning that you would just be with the health problems she's dealing with. I pray you give healing there in that matter. I pray for their chaplain ministry. Lord, that you continue to open up doors of opportunity there. See souls come to know Christ as their Savior. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, you would be with Greg and Becca today, help them as they uh, travel and are preparing to go to New Zealand, and I pray everything will go well there, open up the doors there, and uh, Lord, do pray that, uh, Lord, everything will be done decently and in order, as only you can do, and uh, Lord, I look forward to and hopeful and prayerful, Lord, to see the souls come to know Christ there in New Zealand, and then, Lord, we ask this morning, uh, that you would be with the Sunday school hour. Um, Father, we need you. And uh, Lord, to understand thy word, Lord, you've given us the Holy Spirit. We thank you for that. 
And uh, Lord, I pray that you will just give us understanding this morning in this, this passage of Scripture. Lord, what all these names mean to us, and Lord, how we can use these for our lives. And Lord, it's not so much the names, it's what you did through the people, and we thank you for that. And uh, Lord, it's the same thing you can do through us as we surrender, toward, uh, surrender to you, Lord. Uh, Lord, you can use us, and uh, we thank you for that. Be with our pastor today. I pray that you use him in a mighty way and encourage him and strengthen him. And then, Lord, the families that are hurting today, I pray for the Milson family, Lord, that you would just give comfort there and help them in this difficult time. We give you praise and glory for everything. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, when the Lord saves us, he saves us out of this world. I'm thankful for that. The Bible says he makes us a new creature. And uh, we're made new in Christ. I'm thankful for that. He changes us. And uh, what a wonderful thing the Lord does for us. Well, when the Lord saves us out of this world, from this world, he, we are to identify with Christ in our lives. The way we speak, the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves. It, we should identify. People should know, hey, that person's different in the way they speak. Their, their attitude is different. Listen, if all we go around doing is, is grumbling and complaining about everything, how are people going to know that Christ changed our life? We have hope this morning. We have a reason to be joyful today and rejoice in Jesus Christ. Our names are written down in heaven. Is your name written down in heaven today? I hope so. If not, uh, you can see me. We can get that dealt with today. Your name could be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, we have something to rejoice in today. Well, as we look at this world, we see this world is in darkness. Prince and power of the air is going around. He's seeking whom he may devour. And listen, he has a lot of people's eyes blinded today. God has a world within this world. We look at that, this world is in darkness, but God has a, a world that's within this world and it's made up of those people that have surrendered and, and called upon him. Thankful for that. So if you're saved, you're in, in both, we're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Listen, my home is, is in heaven today. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through, the song says. We're going somewhere wonderful. Soon, I hope. The Christian must choose this morning which one they will pledge themselves to. A lot of Christians today are living for this world. They're choosing the, the, uh, the, the wonderful things of Egypt, if you, uh, if you can, uh, this morning, and put it in that way, rather than choosing the affliction with the people of God. We see that we have a choice to make in our lives. There is a world that would be gone one day. Everything that you see today is going to burn up. It's going to melt away with a fervent heat, the Bible says. And God's going to create and make a new heaven and a new earth. The things that we put so much into, our homes, our cars, the clothes that we wear, our bank accounts. You know those banks are going to burn away someday. They're going to melt away. Those homes we hold dear to us, they're all going to be gone someday. But there are people today that are just living. That's all they care about is what they have in this life. They're not even thinking about the life to come. So that world, this world is going to be gone one day. And then we see that there's a world that will last for eternity that we cannot see. The spiritual things in this world. The spiritual side of it. Someday we're going to be in eternity. Jesus Christ is going to come. He's going to rapture us. We're going to see him face to face. And we're going to be with him forever. Forever. For all eternity. What a wonderful thought that is. The question this morning is, which one are we living for? Oh, it changes from time to time. Sometimes we are living for this world and we choose the things of this world and then the Lord has to bring us back and we say, Lord, okay, I want, I want to live a different way. I want to choose you. And this battle between worlds is, 
is uh, this world in between God is a, a daily thing that we that we have to uh, make. It's a moment by moment choice. I, I believe in our minds that we have to settle and uh, declare that we are going to serve God no matter what. In Ezra chapter two, in the midst of all these names, we find a remnant that returned to Jerusalem. We find a, rem a remnant that returned to Judah. We find a remnant that went everyone to their city. They went home. Someday we're going home. But right now, God has a, a plan for us. God has a work for us to do for him. Ezra, I mean, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9, shows us the importance of God doing his work through the remnant. And he's still doing that work today through the remnant. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Do you know why America is still here today? My honest opinion why America is still here today is because there's a remnant that's serving the Lord. There are Christians that are, are praying and begging God to stay his hand of judgment upon America. Someday they're going to be gone. Someday we are going to be raptured. We're no longer going to be here. And we can only imagine the devastation that we're going to see here in America. Not just here in America, but this world. This world. Ezra chapter number 2. Let's read verse number 1 real quick. It says, Now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity. Of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, every one unto his city. We think of this remnant, these children that came up. Imagine the stories that they heard from their parents of Israel and Judah and how God worked in their lives. We things we look about the remnant this morning as we, we see this remnant. Uh, there's some things about them that I want to point out this morning. Ezra chapter 1 verse 5, it says, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with all them whose spirit God had raised, to go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. As we look at the remnant this morning, we notice that the remnant, their spirit was raised up. God was doing a work in their life and stirring things up. And the reason that God has us here today, he's stirring us up to do something. I tell you what, I'm stirred up about some things this morning. And I know many of us are stirred up about some things in our country and uh, some things. But listen, we can get stirred up about politics all we want to, that's not going to matter anything. We need to get stirred up about the Lord. There's some things that God has stirred up in my heart this morning. He stirred up in my heart about being in the word of God more. Praying more. He stirred me up about witnessing to others and, and making sure that, that when I go out and about that I'm just not doing my business, but I'm, I'm making sure that I'm talking with people. God should stir up some things in our heart. Are you stirred up this morning about something? I tell you what, politics and watching the condition of our country, it stirs me up about some things too. But man, we need to be stirred up about the things of the Lord more than politics. So their spirit was raised up. God did something in their heart, moved in them. Unless I believe God is trying to do something in our hearts today. Stirring his people up to go further, go deeper with him. We notice also about this remnant that there was something for them to do. Verse number five, it says, to go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. God didn't just stir them up and then they just sat there. God stirred them up to do something. What is God stirring you up to do today? We need revival. 
in our lives. I need revival in my life. Revival is not just something that that we should put off for once or twice a year for for a meeting and, and hopefully somebody can come in and preach and stir my emotions up. No, revival happened this morning when it got into the Word of God and He spoke to our hearts. He stirred us up. Then look what it says, verse 5. Then it rose up with all them whose God's Spirit has raised. They didn't just get stirred up and and God give them something to do. They got up and they did something about it. And I believe a lot of people get stirred up about things. A lot of people are stirred up. I'm listening to people speak about politics But when have you contacted your senator and your representative? When have you sent an email to your state legislation to say, hey, this is what I want? A couple weeks ago, I got stirred up about something. And uh, I contacted DJ Swearingen and, and got one of those things. And, and I sent everybody I could an uh, email saying, this is what I expect out of you. This is what I want done. Why? Because that's what we're called to do. That's how, that's how our country was set up. But more important than politics in our country, let's talk about the things of God. God has stirred us up to do something. He's given us the power to do it through the Holy Spirit. He's commanded us to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. So what are we doing about that? What are you doing about that? What am I doing about that? These people got stirred up. God gave them a purpose in their life. And they said, we're getting up and we're going to do this. And they left. And they went back to Jerusalem. They went back to uh, excuse me, Judah. They went back to their city, and they got to work. The remnant, as we look at it this morning, was not those that were left. It was the ones that were obedient to God. And if we're going to be part of the remnant, we're not just the ones that are just left serving the Lord and and, uh, the ones that are left in a church that is doing the right thing. No, if we're going to be part of the remnant this morning, we're going to have to stand up and say, listen, I'm submitting to God. I'm surrendering to him, and I'm going to be obedient to Christ. Every generation, every church, every Sunday school class, every Christian school, every home needs to have a remnant. They need to have somebody in that home, somebody in that church, somebody in that that school, somebody in that Sunday school class, that junior church, someone on that bus route. There needs to be someone that says, I'm going to obey God no matter what. You see, coming to church and just sitting down on a pew is not being part of the remnant. Coming to church and begging God to work and say, God, whatever you have for me today That's what I'm going to obey. That's what I'm going to do. That's being part of the remnant. Being surrendered to God. Goes deeper than sitting in a a pew. It goes deeper than just reading through the Bible, just to read through the Bible. Being part of the remnant, you get into the Bible, you study it, you see what God has for you. Then you take that and you share it with others. Are you a part of the rising remnant in this generation? Every generation needs to have a remnant. I tell you what, I want to be a part of that remnant today. I want to be the ones, not for my name to be recognized, but I want to be the ones that say, hey, I, I want to follow the Lord. I want to submit to God. I want to do what God says for me to do. When we live in a world where there's so much confusion in Christianity today, so much confusion in religion, and you go to one church and and they're worshiping this way and they sound good and, and what they're saying is good, and you wonder to yourself, is this really what church should be or or are they following God when there's so much confusion? The remnant says, I'm gonna go deeper with God and see what God's word has to say about it. God's word is very clear about things. Number one, this morning, the remnant is blessed and used of God. As we look at Ezra chapter 2 and 70 verses of name after name after name, 
and some verses with five, six, ten names in one verse, and you read through this, you think, Lord, what is this? You start drawing some things out, and you notice that God blesses the remnant here. Let's go through this. Chapter number two and verse number two, this isn't really what I want to get into, but we see God's blessing, number one, in family. God's blessing in family. Ezra chapter two, verse one, we notice this. Now these are the children. Would you underline those two words, the children, if, you, if you're in the habit of marking your Bible? Then come down to verse number three. Read those first two words with me out loud. The children. Let's try that again, verse number four, because it repeats it again. The first two words, the children. Verse number five, the children. Verse number six, the children. Verse seven, eight, nine, all the way down to verse 35, you have the children. God blessed them in their family. The children of Parosh. 2,172. Verse number four, 372. 775. We have verse after verse that gives the importance of God blessing the remnant's family. Someone in Babylon had to carry on God's work and God's word and telling these children all about the Lord and what the Lord did in their lives just because they were in captivity did not mean they, they stopped trusting in God. They were there telling them. Ezra, um, excuse me, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 7. Someone had to teach these people the things of God. A reason for them to go back to Jerusalem, to Judah. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. The, the parents took the responsibility of telling the children about the Lord. In fact, it goes farther and deeper than that. It was the father's responsibility. Dads, it's our responsibilities to tell our children and teach them about God. How are we doing with that responsibility? Are we sitting them down and opening the word of God with them? Are we going through and having devotional time with them? Are we making sure that we're having our family prayer times Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 7, it goes deeper. It says, when they lay down, when they walk, listen, every part of the day, we have a responsibility of teaching things about our God. When they're playing sports, it's a great time to teach them about the things of God. When they're watching TV, hey, playing video games, grab the video controller, play with them, and talk to them about the Lord while you're doing it. They're going to play the video games anyways. You might as well use it to talk about the Lord. I think you need to be careful with that stuff, but you might as well use it for the Lord's, you know, for the Lord, opportunity there. So we see they bless in their family. Teaching our children, it's not the responsibility of the Sunday school teacher. It's not the responsibility of the church. It starts at home. Moms and dad, we are to teach our kids the things of God. We see God's blessing, not only in family, but in laborers, in laborers. Look at Ezra chapter 2. Look at verse number 36. So after all the children, we go through their names. God brings up the priest. Look at verse 36. The priest. Verse 40. The Levites. The priests are the ones that, that carried out the sacrifice. They are the ones there uh, taking care of, uh, uh, of the the feast and then uh, the, the sacrifices and uh, making sure the table of showbread and, and those things. Uh, 40, verse 40, the Levites, they were the ones doing the work in the temple and around the temple. Verse 41, hey, praise the Lord, we had singers there. And I'm thankful that there's people that can sing and sing well. But we see that God's blessing is in laborers here. All these people are laboring for the Lord. 
Verse 42, we see the children of the porters. Verse 43, the Nethanims. You go down to verse 55, the children of Solomon's servants. The people that are just doing the ordinary mundane things in life. When God raises up a remnant, he blesses and giving people laborers to do the work of God. God is raising up a, a remnant here in America. People that are serving the Lord, laboring. The Lord will always have someone to serve him. Notice the different aspects of the service here. We have priests, the Levites, singers, porters. Everyone had something different to do. Everyone. What has God called you to do for his service? I'm thankful for the ladies that come in and clean the bathrooms. Thankful for those that come in and, and clean the auditorium. Thankful for Miss Gail. She comes in when we have school and, and still in the summertime. And she comes into school and every day she's there cleaning up the cafeteria after the kids. Thankful for that. I'm thankful for those that greet visitors and guests as they come in. The ushers that pass the plate. Thankful for the men that are, are, are busy in the sound, uh, sound system and, and doing those works. We can get the, the gospel. Thankful for the ladies and, 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 and Ryan that play the piano. Praise the Lord for that. Can you imagine if we didn't have any music here? Thankful for Brother Troy. He comes in and he leads us singing and does a wonderful job at it. And uh, the choir members, thankful for that. Th really thankful for the nursery workers today. Someone... God has something for you to do. You say, well, somebody's already doing that. Well, jump right in alongside them. Many, hand makes, many hands make light work, someone told me a long time ago. Thankful for the bus route workers, uh, Mike and Courtney, that go out and bring in uh, the children on the bus. It's important for us to do that. There's something for someone to do. And as we see the world getting worse and worse, it seems like the laborers are getting fewer and fewer. I'm not talking about here at Grace, but I'm talking as a whole. Church after church, I talked to pastors. I was just down in, just down in, in uh, Virginia, and they were talking to me about Virginia Beach and and uh, their desire of uh, seeing someone go there and start a church. Here's an area of 2.2 million people in that area. And, and, and uh, Virginia Beach uh, has less than that, but they only have two independent Baptist churches. And uh, they just a need there. Things are growing there. And uh, so they were, they were just telling me they were praying and, and so praying with them. That God would send a laborer there. The other churches in, in uh, New England that need preachers, that need pastors, praying that God would send forth laborers to them. Everyone's in need of laborers. God blesses the remnants in giving them. If we're faithful in praying, God will send laborers. Then we see God bless them in substance. Bless them in substance. Ezra chapter 2, look at verse 66. Their horses were 730 and 6. Their mules, 240 and 5. Their camels, 430 and 5. Their asses, 6,720. God blessed them in substance. We see as they, as they left that in Ezra chapter 1, verse 6. Notice how God blessed them. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver with gold, with goods, with beasts, and with precious things beside all that was willingly offered. If you continue reading in that chapter, you'll find out that Cyrus himself, all the vessels that were taken from uh, the temple and, and uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had taken to Babylon, Cyrus was there and he gave it all back to them to take with them. We see that God blesses in substance. God provided them for them during their captivity. 
Even in the midst of their correction, God was still blessing the nation of Israel. And I'm thankful that even in the midst of our correction, God still blesses us and takes care of his people. Before the remnant left, we see Ezra chapter 1 verse 6, they were strengthened by those that stayed behind. Ezra chapter 2 verse 69, we see they gave after their ability. God gives us so that we gives to us so that we can give to others. That's the way he works. We're just a, a funnel through which God's economy flows through. Not to keep and hoard it for all of ourselves. Notice he says, verse 69, they gave after their ability. And the treasure of the work, three score and 1,000 drams of gold, 5,000 pounds of silver, and 100 priest garments. They gave as God blessed them. And the remnant is doing the same thing today. As God blesses us, we're to give it to someone else that needs it. Thankful for that. So God's blessing, we see in family, laborers, substance. Let's notice the remnant used. The remnant used. As we're chapter 1, verse 5, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin. We see what their purpose was. And they were to return to rebuild the temple. To go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So Rubberbull, Ezra, Nehemiah, they would lead the way for the coming Messiah. God had a reason for them to come back and build the temple and restore things in Jerusalem. He was preparing the way for the Messiah to come, for Jesus Christ. There's a purpose. Remnant was used. When you find yourself surrendered to God and obedient to him, God's going to use you. He's going to work through you. What a wonderful thing that is, that God would allow us to be a part of his work. Number two, as we look at this chapter, we see that the remnant is in this world to do God's work. This remnant is in this world to do God's work. God has something for us to do. Ezra chapter 2, and I skipped, I skipped ahead, guys, just for the sake of time this morning. And uh, so I apologize for that. God has something for us to do. Ezra chapter 2, verse 1. It says, They came again unto Jerusalem and drew to every one unto a city. Christ, as we look at this and think of Christ's prayer in John chapter 17, these people were called out of Babylon. They were called out to be separated uh, from, from Babylon, from the world, if you, you want to say that. Christ included us in his prayer, John chapter 17, verse 11 through 16. His desire for us was not to be in the world, excuse me, of the world, but to be in the world making a difference, sharing the word of God with others. So we look at the remnant in this world to do God's work. We see what we do for God, we must do now. Our time to work for the Lord is coming to a close. Work for the night is coming, the song says. There's coming a time when we can work no more. Listen, I'm looking forward to that day, that day of rest, that time of rest. Looking forward to it. But now we have to be busy doing God's work. God's work. It seems like we're busy doing everything else in this world. Everything else in this world but God's work sometimes, doesn't it? Things pop up and we got to do this and things come up, come up and you know we got to go run here and, and do this. But listen, even in the midst of that business, you can still serve God and do God's work. Don't have the opportunity to go out door to door? Then as you're, as you're working on that, that, that team and, or going to that grocery store, hand out a gospel tract. Do something. God has something for us to do. And we must do it now. There's an urgency here. Time is running out. We're in the last of the last days. The remnant was to return and build the altar for, uh, first. 
They would build the altar first, and then they would rebuild the temple, restore biblical faith in Jerusalem. They could not wait to do it. They had to get back, and they had to finish it. But we find out that in the midst of it, they ceased their work for about 15 years. God sent prophets Haggai and Zechariah to correct them, and they started the work again. They finished the temple. Someday we're going to serve the Lord with him in his presence. We're going to be with him. But now we must serve him and influence this world for Christ. We must take a stand now for the things of God. We need to stand true to the word of God. We need to stand true to the doctrine that God has given us that's come, from, that's come from Jesus Christ. So we look at this world and we see the great need of getting the gospel to this world. We can't get confused in our direction and the work that God has given us. So we look at that Mark chapter 16, verse 15, going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, God never told us to win the world to Christ. You never say, see that. What he did see was go and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and reach them. Tell them of Jesus Christ. We know we're not going to win this whole world to Christ. This, this world is a rejecting. It's a rebellion against God. And Jesus Christ knew that. He said, many there be, or uh, few there be that find it. The straight and narrow way. Broad is the gate. There's many going through that broad gate. But we are called, we are called to preach the gospel to every creature. We are called to tell everyone about Jesus Christ. Our desire must still be to win as many as we can. We must work at it. And the things of God, the work of God is work. Read your Bible, study your Bible, sit down and study your Bible and, and tell me that it's not work. Go out and tell people about Jesus Christ and tell me that you don't have to work at it. Tell them Jesus Christ. It's work. But it's a good work. It's a, it's a beneficial work. We must serve the Lord he, he, the way he says to be served. So we see what we do for God, we must do now, but we also are here for a different purpose. Here for a different purpose than the, the things of this world. Jesus Christ has called us to be different from this world. The world is rebelling against God. Within this world, there are those surrendered to God and desire to obey him. Which world are you in this morning? Who do we live for today? Are we living for God or are we living for self and the God of this world, the devil, little g? Do you know that Christ never said to win the whole world for himself? Christ said to preach the gospel to every creature. Look at this. The role of the New Testament church is to see people saved and trained to serve God in a God-rejecting world. Our job this morning is to see people come to know Christ and then to disciple them and teach them how to live for God in this world. Our purpose is to glorify God in the way we live and serve him. Our purpose to make a difference is to make a difference by being, bringing people to Christ. Number three, the remnant must be separated to the Lord. The problem in Ezra chapter 2 comes in verse 61. Look at that verse. And of the children of the priests, the children of Abiah, the children of Koz, the children of Barzillai, which uh, took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and were, was called after their name. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, that they were not found. Therefore were they as polluted put from the priesthood. And the Tershatha said unto them, that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with Urim and with Thummim. We see that the problem here is that some of these priests could not reckon their genealogy. They didn't have a, a record there, and so God counted them as polluted. They were tainted, and they could not perform the office of the priest, the duty of the priest. It shows me this, that God, God is interested in holiness in the way we serve and worship him. God is interested in holiness. 
He desires his people to be a righteous people, different, separated from the, Lord, the world. The problem here is they could not fully separate or show that they were separated from the world. They took time to examine themselves. They could not reckon or find the record, the register, among those that were reckoned by genealogy. This is not a time to be neglectful in our Christian lives. William, William Kelly said this, Although it was a day of weakness and humiliation for these priests, they could not, you imagine how humiliating it was, they could not reckon their genealogy. And so everybody is looking at them. There's, wow, these people, they're, they're, they're polluted. They can't do the work of the, 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 excuse me, the duty of the priest anymore. Humiliating. He says, although it was a day of weakness and humiliation, it was not to be a day of neg negligence, but of the greatest care. It was to be a day when God's people were to be watchful and vigilant for his name as when things were in the full power and beauty of divine order. This is a time to be uh, careful and uh, take careful consideration of our own selves. We see religion has polluted our, our society today, denominations. So we see they examined themselves and then we found that some were polluted. For the priests to do the Lord's work, they had to prove their genealogy first. They had to prove that they were not polluted by Babylon. Is our lives polluted or are we separated? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. We need to be separate in our worship and our service for the king. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24 through 26, But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Talking of Jesus Christ. Wherefore he is able, able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. Jesus is the only way to God. We see religionists have taken over denominations, People have religion today, but they don't have Christ. They don't have Christ. They have their churches, but you know what? They're not worshiping Christ. God is calling us to identify with Christ. So what are some characteristics of the remnant this morning that separates us from others? They identify with Christ. They speak the truth in love. They take a compassionate stand in the spirit of Christ, and they rise up to do God's work. As we see the remnant must rise, are we willing to be part of that remnant? Are we willing to separate ourselves to the Lord from this world? May God help us this week to separate ourselves, separate ourselves to him. Our beginning of obedience, our homework for the week. Number one, please read through the book of Ezra again. Ask the Lord to show you something fresh this week. Number two, memorize and meditate on, on these verses that we have there listed. Number three, pray for God to separate you to himself. The more of God that we have, of, the more of him that we have, the less of the world we desire to have. And then number three, pray for laborers. Pray for laborers this week. Pray for people to fill these, these pastoral positions that God will send them a pastor. Pray for laborers in our bus workers, our Sunday school. Pray for laborers in the choir, people to help out. Pray for laborers this week. May God help us to be, uh, be that, to, to help us be a remnant this morning. Father, help us today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Ezra chapter 2. Help us to see the importance of keeping ourselves holy and righteous for you. Pray you bless the service to come. And uh, we give you praise and glory for everything that's going to happen. And uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, services will begin here in a few moments. And uh, tell someone you're glad to see them today. I'm always living with the struggle 
It's part of my humanity Something within demands perfection And yet it's always out of reach How can I cope with expectations? 